and welcome back. I learned the hard way in some deleted scenes that you have to fly in perfectly. If you hit the wall a little bit too much, you drop off your paraglider and trigger the opening cutscene, which of course ruins the game, you gotta load. I actually made a big mistake here. Uh, something you really need to do is set your travel medallion outside before you come in. Uh, I came in and I grabbed the obliterator and then I saved, and so then I'm stuck with how to get out of the shrine. I decided to do this and I love this. Anyway, obviously after uh, triggering the opening cutscene I had to load the game. Anyway, after I was finally out of there, I wondered if you can attack these guys from above, and it turns out, yes, yes you can. Now something I think most people don't realize when you have a swarm of keys, all you have to do is stasis one of them. The rest of them will all get scared off. Usually you don't even have to fight one, but because they were close to me this time, this one was close enough to come and approach me instead of just getting lost off in a swarm in outer space. Also, the one-hit obliterator, which you ground pound, can be used to kill multiple enemies at once. At last, the first shrine that belongs to Mos Koshia. This is what I've been waiting for. Now the big question is, is that door going to be open or not? And the answer is, it is not. So how can I get in here? So I actually spent a whole lot of time trying and trying and trying to clip into this shrine. I tried it from every side, the left, the right, the back, diagonally. I even found a video online that shows somebody clipping right in through the front door uh, by getting their skew off of the uh, panel. Uh, eventually I decided it would be more fun to go on to the next area. And to this one I say, F you. These guys turned out to be surprisingly fun. What is he doing over there? He's walking toward a puddle, and he just walks right into a puddle. <laughs> so once I saw him do that, of course these fire choo-choos don't normally live around puddles, but once I saw one of them do that, I thought it would be fun to make this guy do it. Here, boy. <laughs> Yay. Now apparently the game designers thought it would be fun to have an exploding barrel rolling down a hill toward a bunch of fire choo-choos. So I decided to start thinking about creative ways to get into shrines. How else can I clip into these shrines? There's a horse technique where you sidle up your horse next to the shrine and you jump off and you save and load. There's also a shield clip technique where you use bullet time physics to shield clip down through the floor. I'm thinking maybe I can clip into the shrines through the roof of the shrine, but I don't have enough stamina yet. It's very stamina intensive and I'm still practicing the technique. For now, I still just have to make all the shrines appear. You'll notice that in the overworld I have my Mipha's Grace and Rivalia's Gale and so on. Revalius Gale will come in very, very handy if I need to shield clip into the shrines from uh, above. And in the Obliterator world, you have none of that. So making the shrines appear and then getting into the shrines from the overworld might be advantageous. And another cool technique for fighting all of these guys is the fact that I can drop my travel medallion someplace high and then float down and do my ground pound and teleport back up. Uh, Stasising bokoblins off of horses is real nice to uh, 
make book goblins easier to kill. Also throwing bait down there, very useful technique. There's also a technique where you get your skew off the panel here and then you clip straight through the door. I haven't been able to do that successfully yet though, so I'm going to continue trying that one or maybe trying to find some additional tutorials. And this is the very first Stell Coblin I saw in the entire game because of course it's 5.15 a.m. As you can see, I'm practicing the shield clipping down through floors technique, but I'm not very good at it yet, and I also just don't have enough stamina yet, so hopefully we'll get some results out of that later. For the time being, let's see if we can steal the obliterator somehow. We always lose it as soon as we teleport away from the Great Plateau, or if we're flying down as soon as we touch the ground. But what if I never touch the ground? That didn't work. What if I kill an enemy before I hit the ground? Uh, that also didn't work. So you notice it's glowing blue, and as I flew along, it lost its blue color, and it changed to a hit power of one. But if I come back toward the Great Plateau, it gets its blue color back, and its attack power is infinity again. So it looks like there's a perimeter around the Great Plateau, and when you're outside of it, it loses its power. Still, it would be cool to steal it anyway if I can, so maybe if I climb on a wall? So I'll save while I'm still holding it and I'm outside the perimeter. Notice in the thumbnail I'm on the wall. As expected, as soon as I touch the ground, I lose it. And I load, you notice from the thumbnail, I am in fact loading the right save file but I appear up here, so it's smart enough to recognize where was the last place you actually did touch the ground. So, on to other things. Uh, I've returned to this Lizalfo that had the Stone Smasher. You notice that I did not kill him. He's still alive, but he doesn't have the Stone Smasher. So I've got to build up my stamina, which means i got to get into more shrines. I tried a whole bunch of different shrines and didn't get in. Uh, I'm only showing the ones that I actually did get in or something interesting happened. So the Dahesho Shrine had this happen, where you can actually get stuck under the platform and can't get out. So I'm trying to stand, I've tried walking in every direction, I tried jumping, everything I could try didn't get me out of there. Uh, fortunately, if you just keep retrying, you can in fact get in. But you got to be careful about getting stuck under that platform. The Zakasho Shrine has the same problem as Dahesho, where you can get stuck under the platform. Uh, but you can, in fact, get in. But that's not the only reason that I'm showing this one. Uh, something special happened here, specifically. We'll see in a second. 
this is the first apparatus shrine that I was able to get into, which means I can do the infinite hearts and stamina glitch for the first time ever. Uh, I'm going to cut off the video at this point, and we're going to do the infinite hearts and stamina glitch in the next video. So, see you all later.